Daddy, why are you dressed up like a dolphin? Mitchell laughed as he picked up his daughter. I'm not a dolphin, you goof, he said. I'm a shark. The little girl in his hands giggled and bared her teeth at him, growling and playfully flailing her arms around. Rawr, rawr, I'm a shark princess, daddy, she yelled gleefully. Can I be a shark princess? He chuckled. But you're such a pretty princess already. Why would you ever want to be a shark? Samantha pondered this for a moment, putting a hand under her chin as she had often seen her father do when he had to think hard about something. Can I be a shark princess later, she asked. Sure, honey, but tonight you're just a regular princess with a shark daddy who's taking her trick-or-treating, Mitch said as he set his daughter down, brushing down her tutu. She cheered at this and snatched her mini cauldron from off of the couch. Sam excitedly bounced towards the door, her grey-clad father tailing close behind. It was a cool evening in the town of Molierville. The wind gently pushed brown and orange leaves across the ground as the orange sun cast long shadows as the light faded from the sky. It was Halloween night, and it was the first year that Samantha Nichols was old enough to go trick-or-treating. She led her father excitedly by his hand out into the yard, pulling him past the carved jack-o'-lanterns and cobwebbed tombstones. Her father laughed as they ran, readjusting his costume as it slipped off of him. As they hurried past their driveway into the lawn of the neighbors, a figure rolled out of the shrubs in front of them. Springing to his feet, he sprinted towards the confused pair, shouted, Take this, pawn scum, and slammed his fist into Mitch's abdomen. He doubled over in pain, his daughter angrily shouting at the man who was rushing towards a waiting black van. Daddy, Daddy, are you alright? Sam wordly looked over the figure kneeling on the ground. Do I need to get Mommy? He groaned, pushing himself up with one hand and dusting himself off with the other. I'm fine, sweetie, he said. It'll take more than that to put your old dad out of action. He glanced towards the street, which the van had quickly vacated. He shook his head at the absurdity of it all and took his daughter's hand as they walked towards the first house. Agent James sat in the back of the van, head in his hands. He had failed. His first major mission, and he blew it. Not only was the shark still mobile, but it still had the hostage. He was in for a demotion for sure, probably all the way down to bait duty. The shark would free the room and cause havoc, and it was all his fault. He sighed, pulled out the materials from the pocket in front of him, and began to write up the report. They would have to send out a squad tomorrow to clean up his mess for sure. Shark number 32145 Shark Class Terrestrial Shark Punching Command Shark 32145 cannot be directly punched in the frontal cranial region due to a hostage human being used as a shield. Due to this, agents are to approach the shark as swiftly as they possibly can, apply direct pressure to the frontal thoracic area of the shark, and retreat just as swiftly. Multiple agents may be required to carry out SPC repeatedly if the shark needs to be punched further. Description: Shark is approximately 1.4 meters long. Notable features of this shark include fully functional lower appendages used for bipedal locomotion and a lack of the rough texture normally found on shark skin. More frighteningly, the shark appears to be holding an adult male captive in its mouth. As recovering the subject at this point would require actions further than those described in the shark punching commands, this male adult has been deemed irretrievable. It is unknown whether this subject is aware of his condition or not. This shark is extremely dangerous due to its terrestrial locomotion, as well as its obvious parasitism and possible telepathic and anesthetic abilities. Under no circumstances should this shark be kicked, as it may kick back. Agents must move faster than with aquatic sharks, as this shark is fully mobile on land and can move as rapidly as some of our agents on land. Addendum Alright agents, I'm sure you've all heard of these. I've heard the whispers around the halls and cafeteria and, well, it's happened. We have a tight brown on our hands, a full-fledged humus shark that needs to be taken care of immediately. Here's what you do. You run up and punch it before it has time to react, because the moment it has time to react is when it all goes to hell. Godspeed and good luck. Boxer.